I think generally in supply, we've seen shifts, especially in those supply planning, um, demand planning roles, you know, salary increases, I suppose, pre, pre-COVID and post-COVID, I'd say between 10 and uh, $20,000. Yeah. Welcome back to another episode of HPG Insights. Today, we will be covering supply chain and procurement. I have with me, Specialist Manager, Gemma Stadden. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well. And we also have Laura Longstaff, Director of Supply Chain and Procurement. How are you today? Good, thanks. Beautiful. Um, First of all, thank you very much, both of you, for sitting down with me today to chat all things supply chain and procurement, an industry that has... uh, vastly changed over the last few years so it'd be great to yeah. to sit down have a chat find out what's been happening what the differences are within um supply chain and procurement now in comparison to i guess let's say 2018 to 2019 um first of all can you just give us a, a quick insight for anyone listening how does someone actually start the process of getting into the supply chain and procurement industry Yeah, so I'll take this one. (laughs) Um, So in terms of getting into supply chain, I think generally we see tend to see a lot of people coming through from customer service, logistics, inventory, warehouse. So building up their career um, from that level and then moving through into a supply chain role. Um, And typical attributes, I'd probably say that we tend to see in somebody who does well in supply chain would be, I guess, having really strong analytical skills and being able to problem solve, think on their feet. Um, They're the types of people that we tend to see that do really well in supply chain. If you'd like, would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And do you think whenever you find people who are entering into the supply chain industry, Mm. do you think it's a conscious decision that they've made or it's kind of they've started in a role within, like you said, warehousing or customer service? And then they've kind of just worked their way through the business and then they mm. end up in that kind of very important role. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I don't think it's always a conscious decision. Mm. I think a lot of times people fall into it. Um, a lot of times people don't even know what it is. Mm. Mm. You know, they don't know how the product gets from A to B. They don't know anything about it and they find out about it when they get into a role. Um, we work a lot in the customer service space here at yeah. HPG as well and these people work very, very closely within the warehouse and the logistics side of things and would get a really good understanding from there. Yeah. Um, or people that do have a genuine interest and they want to take their career to the next level but they're not sure where to go, the supply chain is just a really good next step for mm. them because their careers can skyrocket in there. Yeah. For sure. Um, so when it comes to the supply chain landscape over the last three years can you just give me a quick little insight into what has changed the most and what you've seen yeah it's changed dramatically over the last couple of years Mm. obviously covid's had a massive impact on supply chain um Mm. you know the most obvious thing would be the bringing the products into the country yeah very very few healthcare companies actually manufacture their own products here in australia so that importing the products has been a huge strain on supply chain mm. um i think supply chain as well whereas previously they've kind of fallen under the radar nobody's really known who they are mm. they've been the kind of unsung heroes of over the last few years yeah. like the spotlight has been on them it's all on them when they don't have the products and it's all it's you know it's it's all on them mm. um to 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 really shine and to make sure that yeah. they can service their customers so a lot of companies yeah. had to have a big focus on how can we do this better um what can we do how can we change mm-hmm. and that's where there's been big differences over the last couple of years yeah it's definitely shone a huge light on the area hasn't it and yeah made people look at you know what they're doing and how things could be improved in the business and things like that so yeah, it's been a huge challenge, I think, for some yeah. people in supply chain. Oh, 100%. And I can imagine prior to um, COVID over the last few years, there was probably maybe a sense of comfortability where people were in supply chain were just getting the job done yeah. because you could get the products in very easily and yeah. um, whatever way they were coming in. And then now when this had happened where flights weren't coming in as often, shipments weren't coming in as often, they had to change the way they probably did things in terms of the processes, the way that they communicated and finding new ways to actually get literal medical products into the country. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of thinking on their feet. You know, no one had really been through that circumstance before and so many people were going through the same thing as well. So, yeah, it was a 
I suppose, a huge thing for people yeah. to overcome. Yeah. And has there been any new kind of rules created within the supply chain and procurement industry since COVID? Yeah. yeah, I think we've seen quite a few new positions being created. So we've seen a lot of analytical type roles. So operations analysts or supply chain analysts or, you know, kind of roles in between, I suppose, the customer and the company as well. So, you know, really focusing on the customer and the mm. outcome, you know, communications between the 3PL, um, getting products to the customer. So, yeah, we've seen a lot of roles being implemented, especially for more of an analytical, yeah. I suppose, direction. Um, yeah, there's been a few of those, hasn't there? Yeah, yeah, and I think not just focusing, not just having the planners focus on the analytics, yeah. bringing yeah, in specific people yeah. to support the planners, but really looking at the data side of things yeah. and yeah. doing better with what they've got yeah. and how can they really, um, you know, elevate what they've got and, and the processes that they have in place. So there's been a lot of emphasis on what can we do better um, with with the tools that we've already got in place, how can yeah. we elevate it? Mm -hmm. And would it be safe to say that due to these new rules being created, <clears throat> uh, specifically when it comes to supply chain and maybe supply chain managers, some of the responsibilities that they may have had before has now been taken away because they can now concentrate solely on what their job exactly is. And then they've brought in other roles that can actually support them to make the, I guess, the process a little bit more streamlined. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. definitely more strategy involved um, mm -hmm. and, you know, the people at the top have got a bit more room to look at the strategy of the business yeah. rather yeah. than just kind of the day-to-day -day operational side mm -hmm. of things. So where um, your supply chain managers, your ops managers might have been a little bit more hands-on in the day-to-day, by bringing these people in they've got to train them up to be sort of the best they can be for the business and to provide that support. But they're also looking at the who do we need who, um, where are the gaps? Yeah. What can we be doing better? And how do we get through this and come out the other end? Yeah, mm. definitely. It's created more avenues as well for people in their careers to, mm. you know, take other options and, you know, for those that are analytical to kind of move into that space as well. So that has been good for, for those that wanted to get into the yeah. area. Oh, yeah. that's beautiful. I think from a, um, not forgetting the procurement side of things in terms yeah. of yeah. new roles, what's been a big focus is, um, a lot of companies in healthcare, specifically in Australia, um, they run the procurement side of things out of their head office, which is Asia or Europe, mm. traditionally. Mm -hmm. um, and in Australia, it's often absorbed by either supply chain or finance. Um, it, it's not, the importance isn't there for that function. Yeah, Whereas okay, since okay. COVID, I've noticed a huge increase in companies here in Australia looking to bring this function in-house. Yeah. So hiring... Um, it doesn't have to be a whole department. It can often be hiring a procurement specialist or a procurement manager to bring that function and, and really take ownership of that mm. function mm. here because we need to be looking at new suppliers, local suppliers, looking at different contract negotiations and having somebody here on the ground is something that is more attractive to um, a lot of the employers yeah. now. So there's been a big yeah. focus from that side of things as well. And that goes lovely into my next question when it comes to kind of the candidate pool and their salaries as well. Um, as you said, <clears throat> companies here are slowly realising that procurement in-house is going to be quite important for them moving forward. What do you, what have you seen in terms of the candidate pool yeah. and the salaries that people are even asking for, the salaries yeah. that companies mm -hmm. are offering? Yeah, from huge the, Yeah, so from the procurement side, I'll talk about that yeah. if you want to then go into supply yeah. chain, but from procurement, I've noticed that they're not paying what they need to be paying for what they actually want, if yeah. that makes sense. <clears throat> so yeah. they want somebody that can come in and start up a whole function, um, you. you know, negotiate with their suppliers, really make a difference. If you get a good procurement person, they will save your company a lot of money in the long run. Okay. Whereas it's almost like speaking to a lot of these companies, they're not willing to invest the money to get the right they're person. They're asking for the world, but maybe mm. not offering okay. But they're not yeah. offering. Yeah. for them. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So they're, they're looking for more um, senior people to come and do the role, but the salary isn't in line with what their expectations are. How, con how do you combat that like com that conversation with, with the it's clients? It's just about educating clients a lot. Because um, a lot of times they probably don't even know what they should yeah, be the offering. They kind of just throw yeah. out a number that they yeah. think's okay. And, mm -hmm. then and I think the thing in procurement as well, specifically, is the titles are so interchangeable. Mm. Um, you know, you've got procurement manager, procurement specialist, um, 
are different things in different companies and then obviously you go into your category management and things like that so there's so many different titles but depending on what company you're in really depends you know procurement manager might just be managing um the procurement but no people whereas yeah. other companies you're managing people as well so it's really interchangeable titles are really hard to decipher you know what salary goes in line with that title mm. so i think for me it's a lot about educating clients this is what you'll get if you hire somebody with this experience yeah. but if you're looking to pay this amount i'll show you what you can get for that as well mm -hmm. um nine times out of ten we can get them up but often it's not the line manager in australia that is making the decision a lot of times it's the global company yeah. so it, it might be out of their hands and they can't get budget for it yeah. so okay. yeah a lot of times it's just education yeah yeah definitely what about supply chain i think generally we've seen a huge shift in in salaries i think it just i mean starting with the talent pool it's it's really tough out there like we're finding speaking to clients that it's difficult to find the right people um a lot of people are you know i suppose being retained by their companies quite well from a salary perspective and benefits perspective as well because you know people want to retain good staff in their yeah, business sure. um but i think generally in supply we've seen shifts especially in those supply planning um demand planning roles you know salary increases i suppose pre pre-covid and post-covid i'd say between 10 and uh, twenty thousand yeah. dollars increase on their base salaries um yeah and Jeez. i think you know demand planning manager roles we've seen an increase there as well but generally more so in that demand and yeah. supply planning space there's been a huge a huge shift in yeah. salaries which has been i suppose from our perspective quite an eye an eye opener yeah um, it's difficult to yeah. manage as well <laughs> very difficult we're working with clients to place a role where they need a certain skill set and they're hiring candidates that previously pre-covid have been on 80,000 yeah. 90,000 yeah and then they're hiring them into I've seen people get 115 or 120,000 for yeah. these roles which just wasn't a thing yeah, yeah. Um, but the candidates can demand it and because it's not just one you know random candidate demanding this amount of money it's it's the whole market yeah, yeah. they have to pay, have to pay it pay but it. they're not yeah. getting the skill sets for what you know previously somebody on 120 would previously be a, a you know a really Senior. good demand manager yeah. or mm. you know either managing a couple mm. of direct reports mm. or very very well experienced in that um field whereas now you're getting people that don't have lots of experience but they're getting a salary yeah. that is that because there's is it a lack of candidates in the market or is it because they've realized how important supply chain now is for their organization to be successful or is it maybe a big mix a of both yeah maybe, think, and the candidates yeah. it's a candidates market at the moment as well so what you're finding is mm. candidates um they're holding all the cards yeah. yeah they're playing the they're playing companies off against each other yeah. they're playing companies off against their own company they're using it to get counter offered they're yeah it's a real you know it's a playground for them at the moment yeah <laughs> they're having a good they've time they've got yeah. a multiple choice <laughs> absolutely yeah. and then they're yeah. hearing what their friends get and you know oh you're still yeah. on 80,000 I've just been offered 110 yeah. at this people company. are a little bit more open about discussing so, their salaries yeah. now with each other so yeah, yeah. and That's... so now it's known in the market that they're probably being underpaid well you know previous to COVID it wouldn't be underpaid but yeah. now they yeah. see that they're being underpaid so they're more likely to be right all right what's out there for me yeah mm. and even managing them through a recruitment process is tough because you might speak to them at the start of the process and they'll say I'm on 90,000 I'd accept yeah. 95 and mm. you take them through the process but yeah re other recruiters have been speaking to them other companies have been speaking to them and by the end of that process they want 110 yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's a really tricky yeah market. they've been promised other salaries yeah. and you know spoken to other companies that maybe are paying like 110 115 mm. yeah. 120 and then yeah their expectations will change yeah. a little bit then so it's interesting yeah <laughs> and challenging makes yeah. the recruitment process a little bit more exciting I guess. yeah it does <laughs> we love it keeps us on our toes <laughs> bit of order it's great yeah um so do you have any this so this is going to be more geared towards organization i guess even some of our clients who potentially could be listening are there any ways that they can become a little bit more resilient when it comes to supply chain what are some mm. things that you think some of the organizations could be doing to improve their I think um one of the things that was probably really exciting for me to see at the start of covid was the focus on the customers so you know a lot of companies and not all companies by any means but a lot of companies were about making money you yeah. know it wasn't the focus wasn't on the customers it was mm. on the bottom line so 
a lot of companies have now they're looking at that customer centricity side of things yeah. so they're they're hiring people you know Gemma mentioned earlier about there's new roles being cr- created and that's mm-hmm. to have the per- that have somebody being that conduit between the company and the customer yeah. and okay we can't get all the product in that you know you have asked for but having somebody that can say here's what's happening here's mm-hmm. when it will be in I can get this amount for you and spreading it across other customers but just keeping customers up to date is so yeah. simple yeah. It is. but managing their expectations keeping in touch with them doing what you say you'll do mm-hmm. and putting that focus there and you know some co- some companies have you know changed their values around it they've updated their websites to talk about that Reflected. customer yeah. focus mm. piece so it's really exciting because more that's attractive to candidates you know people want to go yeah. and work with companies that are focusing on customer. the customer yeah. so it's a nice that's mm-hmm. a really nice change of pace yeah um, and I think the other thing is and it's definitely not everybody but the the technology piece the systems piece you know systems have always been a big thing in supply chain yeah and it still baffles me that even with some of the biggest you know the global pharma and medical companies have the worst systems yeah. you've or ever seen well. yeah, yeah. yeah or they'll have multiple yeah. systems <laughs> using or, five different systems yeah or, or no like up-to-date processes mm. for planning in place yeah and this isn't just your small companies that are starting out this is your big yeah. global companies that you know they'll they'll ask us to help them recruit a demand manager because they've no snops already in place yeah. and this yeah. person's got to bring it in from scratch and that still baffles me you know I've been doing this uh, with HPG for 11 years and it, it, it's still it's the big players that I'm always thinking wow they, yeah. they've been it's doing so well just too much time and effort for them to yeah, to, yeah. To and it. I guess as well like you don't know what you don't know so but it's really exciting some companies do it really well some are moving through and, and um, you know they, they do the SNOP process which is a massive part of you know for any organization they do it really well yeah. i actually see fmcg companies do that better oh, than yeah. better mm. than most mm-hmm. um, and that's why when we're looking to recruit for our clients and you know a lot of clients will say i want somebody from pharmaceutical or medical yeah. devices we try and open it up to fmcg candidates as mm. well because they can it's still you know regulated products it's still a similar industry yeah, yeah. um but they can bring a lot to the table. Yeah, there's in transferable terms. skills. Yeah, super transferable. Really transferable. Yeah. And, you know, having a fresh pair of eyes from another industry can actually work really well for yeah. companies. Oh, for sure. Mm. So that sense. system side, I, I will find candidates that will refuse to go to a new Absolutely. client if they've got old clunky systems. Yeah, it's a candidate attraction Whoa. thing as yeah. well. They'll want to work on a certain system. It makes their job yeah. easier. So that would um, be a, probably a specific <clears throat> question that you may be asked, what's your system? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. It's huge. Yeah. Companies don't like to necessarily train people up in new systems. So a yeah. lot of companies, it's a must-have that you have, have that to, specific yeah. system. Yeah. But candidates are picky about it as well. Mm. because if you've not got the right systems in place you're doubling up on work yeah mm. um it takes you twice as long three times as long to get the job done and the same results yeah um and it's just really frustrating yeah. so yeah that's a real effect for candidates. are there any particular systems you think these organizations should use or the candidates and um, specifically ask yeah. a lot more about yeah sap is a big one yeah. that we it's still the most popular yeah okay. still the most popular one that we um yeah. we come across power bi those sorts of things yeah. and so, they've got modules yeah. and add-ons yeah to and SAP. sap seems to be a system that is over a few different industries as well yeah. customer yeah. service representatives use yeah. that as well yes. so yeah. Yeah. yeah all speak to it's each other absolutely it, so. and like yeah. i say there's um different tools there's also different tools for planning and things like that but yeah. normally um if clients use sap they'll ask for people that have sap yeah, yeah. if they don't use that sap they'll ask for somebody that's used another erp system yeah. Okay. Yeah. um because they know that it's not as common companies using oracle and jd edwards are still yeah. out there but they're just not as common anymore yeah mm-hmm. um so yeah a lot of companies are doing that integration yeah um and again, it's just how well they do that and how well that's planned. Because yeah. that can also cause a lot of issues when they've not done, done the integration properly. properly. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And then just to finish off, um, what kind of things do you both look out for when it comes to resumes to help um, people stand out? Um, I think for me, I like I love to see um, achievements on a resume. So maybe listing, um, you know, at the bottom of a role, maybe what one or two or three achievements, maybe or some projects that you've maybe been part of or implemented along the way. I love to see that on a resume because that stands out to me. Um, that's one of the first things that I'll yeah. look at. Um, 
yeah i think that that's yeah i'd agree with that i mean yeah. supply chain supply chain same mm. with procurement these people people know what you've been brought in yeah. to do but it's what how can you add value to that Absolutely. employer what have you done what are what's going to get people excited yeah. uh, so projects like implementations things like that are things yeah. that people want to see yeah and on the procurement side of things you know ultimately procurement you're there to save the company money how much money have you saved them yeah. how have you done it yes um what categories have you worked on mm. they're all things that are really important and i think not forgetting that the, the the resume is your sales tool. Yes. So putting yeah. a little bit of effort into it will actually pay off for you. Yeah. Not just sticking the job title down no. and you know nothing else in there. Yeah. yeah. It's really important. That's what will get you noticed. Yeah. Definitely you don't quite have a lot of, Im- important. A lot of time. Sorry, it's definitely Maybe. quite important to, um, for each job you do apply to, apply for to make a specific to that role yeah. as yeah, well. Yeah. Tailor because, your resume. Yeah. Like, yeah. Don't just flick your resume and, and think that's going to yeah. be yeah. the same for every single position. Like be specific to the person that you're applying to. Um, because we do, we do look yeah. at those resumes specific to the role. So yeah, that's super yeah. And important. And we're happy to give people guidance yeah, and absolutely. tips and tricks on how to make their resume more attractive. So we're yeah. very, very happy to offer that to our candidates as well. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's just really, really important. Perfect. Well, I will put your details in the caption and in the description for anyone who is in the supply chain and procurement industry to reach out to you guys if they need any help. Thank you. But thank you very much for sitting down with me. That was amazing. Uh, You have given some great insights into the industry. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rain. Thanks.